Uh, this is, I think, the fifth time I've been on the Jazz Cruise, and uh, it's just the greatest gig of the whole year. I mean, oftentimes when we're traveling, we're waking up at four in the morning and running to the airport, and uh, it, it can be really exhausting being on the road. Like, people think that it's uh, all fun and games, but unfortunately, it can be really hard work. But this week really is fun. You know, it's great. You have one simple flight down to Florida, and then you're on this wonderful ship all week. And, uh, you know, I get to see a lot of people who I don't see usually because we're, we're like uh, ships passing in the night. And uh, I get to hear all this wonderful music. It's totally inspiring. And, you know, we get to play every day. I don't have to travel. Free food. That's very important. Someone told me once... Uh, the more you eat, the more you're getting paid. And then he told me, I'm going to give myself a raise. Oh, one of the great things about the Jazz Cruise is that there's so many uh, great listeners here. You know, getting to know a lot of the guests on the cruise has been as enjoyable for me as uh, getting to meet some of my heroes and you know mingle with musicians who I admire because it seems like everybody here is really connected to the music in a deep way and uh, sometimes being a lover of jazz can be a very lonely feeling out there in the world because uh, there aren't that many people who understand or appreciate and it's just a very comforting feeling for me to be around so many people who share my love of this music. I met Freddie Cole in 2000. Uh, I was still working with Benny Green's band, and we did a gig in New York, and Freddie was there. And uh, we got to be friends, and uh, Freddie has been someone who I've looked to for advice at uh, crucial junctures in my life. Uh, you know, I remember in, in 2004, I had this offer to go out with a pop singer named Michael Buble. And, you know, Freddie was already sounding me out about coming with him, you know, and I had I told Freddie, you know, I really would much rather play with you, you know, what do you think the right thing to do is? And he said, you know, he said, we're going to be here. He said, you need to, you know, do that. He said, eventually you're going to have a family and you're going to need that money and, uh, you know, it's going to be good for your career and your exposure. And, uh, and it really, you know, all those things I think were right on. And Freddie has always been a real stabilizing influence in my life. He's just really centered and easygoing and uh, and just, you know, the greatest singer in the world. I just love him to death. So I joined the band in uh, 2007 and before that I had subbed with them occasionally and uh, it's just been really fun. We really get along great and we uh, tend to like the same things. It's really an unlikely pairing, I guess, if you looked at us, but um, I just really identify with him and I love the gig every night I mean it's just uh, it's just so much fun such happy music you know I have really different relationships with different guitarists there's uh, and it really depends on how how we interact as people um, there's some guitarists who I just admire so much and I kind of go mute when I'm around them a little bit, um, you know, people who I've looked up to since I started playing. and But sometimes, uh, because of the warmth of their personality, they'll they'll bring me out of that. Like, I, I got to spend some time with George Benson a couple years ago, and, you know, when I first met him, I was, you know, like, shaking with nervousness, but within a few minutes, we were passing the guitar back and forth, and uh, I really forgot that it was, like, George Benson, you know, I mean, it really... Uh, I really felt a great amount of uh, ease with him and just, you know, sharing excitement over the instrument. And uh, another guy who I really look up to tremendously is Russell Malone. And I've known Russell since I was 16. Um, actually, I was opening up for him at a, at a club in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I grew up, called the Bird of Paradise. And he was just so warm and welcoming, and he actually let me sit in with the band, which was really exciting. and. Uh, wonderful you know and then I've got uh, some younger guitarists who I'm friends with and uh, you know I try and uh, 
show them the love that I've gotten from the older guys and encourage them. And this can be uh, such a such a tough business. And and guitar is not always a primary instrument in jazz. You know, a lot of times if there's you know if there's everybody needs a bass player and everybody needs a drummer and then probably they're going to get a piano player and you know if they need some burning soloist maybe they're going to get a saxophonist or a trumpet and guitar fits in this weird uh, uh, never never land um, but I think it's really also the most magical instrument I mean because we can play chords like a piano but we can you know bend notes or slur or swell our volume the way a horn player could and uh, I mean, I'm just crazy about guitar.